Hello and welcome to ZTEX webinar, a better way to inspect for surface and subsurface cracking. My name is Wayne Waxman and I'm the Director of Marketing at ZTEC. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. I ha do have a couple of logistical items before we get started. Everyone is in listen-only mode and we are recording today's session so you can review and listen or share it with your colleagues in your organization. Everyone who registered for this webinar will receive an email later this week with a link to the recording. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar, but you don't have to wait until the end to send in a question. At any time, just type your inquiry in the questions section on your GoToWebinar panel. Before we begin, I'd like to give a quick overview of ZTEC. ZTEC is a global industry NDT leader. For 50 years, we've advanced the science and standards in both ultrasonic and eddy current technologies. We've been setting new heights in inspection performance, productivity, and predictability. ZTEC's proven expertise and complete product portfolio serve the inspection needs of our customers worldwide in transportation, power generation, manufacturing, and oil and gas. ZTEC is a subsidiary of Roper Technologies. Let's get to today's session, which will be presented by Jesse Heron. Bill Ziegenhagen, and Jerry Park from ZTEC. Jesse is a product manager for Eddy Current Systems. Bill is the product manager for Eddy Current Probes. And Jerry is our sales and applications engineer. With that, let's get started on today's webinar. For today's agenda, Jesse will start with a MIS 21C instrument overview. Bill will then provide a Surfex Probe family overview. We'll have four video demonstrations, then we'll do summaries on both products and wrap it up with a Q&A. I'll turn it over to Jesse now. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, I'm Jesse Heron, the Eddy Current Systems Product Manager for ZTEC, and I'm going to be going over the MIS 21C instrument overview. Uh, the MIS-21C is one of the primary instruments for the Surfex array probes. So the MIS-21C is a uh, ergonomic handheld eddy current instrument and it comes in three different variations. So there's a single frequency version, a dual frequency, and an array version. And it's that third array version that you would be using the Surfex array probes with. The MIS-21C is a direct replacement for the MIS-21B, but it uh, does a whole lot more because of the surface array capability. Um, it's a very easy to use instrument. The software was developed from the ground up with a uh, mindset of having a very friendly, intuitive uh, user interface that really shows you the information that you want to see on the screen at the time that you need it. And uh, this is truly the first instrument to have surface array in a handheld form factor. Uh, some of the key benefits is that it's very lightweight and easy to hold. It's uh, about two pounds and it's competitively priced against equivalent functionality for an instrument of this uh, variety. It's very high probability of detection. The uh, acquisition boards have developed over time from previous MIS instruments, so it carries forward all of that um, high performance for signal-to-noise ratio. And um, compatibility with many of the standard probes using adapters. Uh, we also have a new scanner called the ZM5 that we do for bolt hole scanning, um, and there are adapters for adapting other scanners. That would be for the dual frequency version the array version includes that uh, rotating scanner capability. Uh, it's much faster and easier than PT and MT techniques. Uh, you don't have to deal with any of the chemicals. And for eddy current, that works well for pencil probes or, or standard eddy current coils. But when you go to array, that's where you really start to see the savings uh, against techniques like uh, dye penetrant and magnetic particle testing. Um, and then one of the benefits is that you can actually record that data and save those data files. So with the array, uh, array instrument, you can do multiple scans and data files on a given part, and then you can have that as a part of the record of inspection. 
and compared to standard eddy current, the surface array dramatically uh, reduces the inspection time. So we just released a new variant of the hardware for the MIS-21C uh, this summer, and it has some benefits uh, that are added into it. One of them is that it's sealed up to, or designed to, an IP66 uh, sealing rating. And that comes with uh, now fanless quiet operation. It's completely sealed and is able to go into multiple environments and inspect in uh, many different areas. The uh, internal memory was increased to 128 gigabytes. So you no longer have to just rely on the USB drive for expanded memory internally. It has uh, a much larger memory capacity. And to kind of give you a scale of, of what you can do with that, for um, surface array scans, the data files are typically in that kind of five megabyte range. So you can have up to 25,000 uh, stored data files with that much memory. You can still expand the memory actually as, as high as you would like with the USB uh, external drive, but you don't have to do that. And then it uh, has also some future capability of doing tutorial, vi tutorial videos, and those videos will be in kind of like a help section of the instrument and having that larger internal uh, memory space, uh, we can su support those videos, tutorial videos in there. The unit has an increased operating temperature, so it's up to 50 degrees Celsius, 122 Fahrenheit. And um, this really benefits in hot areas or where you're working, say like in an aerospace environment where you have um, pavement and reflected heat. Uh, it, will be able to handle those environments well. Internally, it has better temperature sensing. Um, there was some board updates to, to do that. And the, the uh, back of the unit now has almost like a, what we call a shotgun style uh, battery in, way to insert the batteries. And now the batteries, uh, you can put them in individually. You don't have to have these battery sets that we had before. Uh, and the battery doors are toolless, so you don't need to have an external tool to be able to take the batteries out and put in new, new batteries. What this does is it allows you to easily do 24-hour operations where you can have an extra set of batteries and quickly swap those out. If you have a um, standard just off-the-shelf charger, you can put those batteries onto a charger and kind of recycle them so you're able to do full continuous inspection. Um, the batteries themselves are a standard, what's called an 18650 rechargeable battery cells. So you can go out and get those on your own if you like, if it's easier, or you can purchase uh, extra batteries through ZTech. Uh, to go along with the sealed instrument, now that there's no fans in there circulating the heat and dissipating heat, uh, there's now illuminated power switch so that you know that the unit is on. If the unit goes into a sleep mode and you have the screen that's dark, you can actually still see that the unit's powered on because it's got the LED lights on there and illuminated. So. Um, this makes it a lot easier to, uh, to interface with the instrument and know when it's um, using battery, essentially. Uh, and then there's also a, a raised bezel to help prevent inadvertent uh, presses of the battery, of the power battery, or power button, sorry. The USB door has been improved so that it actually has a slightly higher uh, seating to it and that allows for the USB drive that was provided with the instrument to uh, be encapsulated in there when it's closed. And this helps to maintain the ceiling during use. So when you have your uh, connectors on and the USB door closed, then it uh, keeps that ceiling in that top interface area. And it has a, um, a better tactile snap retention mechanism that was put in there with a uh, lanyard that loops around into an internal post so it uh, can't easily pull out. So what's the MIS-21C used for? And I've mentioned aerospace, and that's 
what we consider the primary market, but it definitely applies to oil and gas, transportation, power gen, manufacturing, infrastructure, really any market with that surface array capability allows you to do uh, multiple types of surface inspections, complex geometry, lots of different material types, carbon steel, aluminum, stainless steel. Uh, so it, it really opens up uh, to a lot of different applications. So this is just a, a table form of the three different variants. You can see the um, SF, which is the single frequency, has the handheld probes, plus point weld scan probes, and conductivity probes. And all three of those options carry through all three models. In the dual frequency version, the DF, the rotating scanner dual frequency capability is added. And then in the array version, you get everything above plus the surface array. And shown, shown down here is the, uh, an example of the new Surfex array probe. This here is our ZM5 scanner. So from a visual look at the different types of probes and accessories, you can see um, all of these here are your standard eddy current probes. Um, anything with these connectors are connecting into the rotating scanner. Uh, the ZM5 has the standard four pin Fisher type connector for the rotating scanner. Uh, the slide probes, plus points, and the Surfex array probe. Uh, connector wise, all, all of these probes connect into the standard eddy current connector. When you get the array version, it comes with an extra connector, which is the array connector, and that ser services all of the Surfex uh, array probe family. So this combination of the Surfex array probe in, in a portable um, handheld instrument is really the disruptive solution. It's a, a leap forward in being able to do complex surface array inspections in a very easy to use form factor. And, uh, and because of bringing this, scaling this down into such a small instrument, we're able to bring it uh, with a very low to total cost of ownership. So the total cost of the system for surface array is much lower price point and makes it easier to adopt this into different industries that have had a hard time because of cost constraints being able to get surface array to really um, connect in those industries. So next uh, we'll be doing an overview of the Surfex array probes. Hello, this is Bill Ziegenhagen. I'm the probe product manager for ZTech. Um, today I'm going to be talking about an exciting new family of flexible surface array probes that we have called the Surfex uh, Flexible Probe Line. Um, what makes this probe line so unique is that it's got a modular approach to allow you to use the same um, items to do a wide range of applications. Um, each one of these probes comes with an electronics module uh, and to the electronics module you can attach different types of coil sets that allow you to perform different applications. Also, the electronics module can uh, have a universal encoder attached to it and you can attach this encoder in different positions and on either side of the probe to allow you to um, uh, use it in the most effective way for each application that you're doing. These electronics modules, there's a different one required for either the MIS-200 or the MIS-21C, but the different tape coil sets that you have work with uh, either instrument. Also, each electronics module has three different wear options on them, surface wear options. You can do a UHMW surface, a cloth surface, or a super fabric. Um, the UHMW is used for in laboratories when you're trying to get very near to your indications or flaws. Uh, the cloth wear surface can be used when you're protecting the surface that you're looking at as well as the 
protecting the probe itself. And then the super fabric is a very resilient fabric that can be used over very rough surfaces where you're not worried about the um, surface potentially being scratched. So I'm now going to go over some different applications of these probes. The first one I'm going to cover is the T and butt weld probe. What makes this probe truly unique is that not only does it have a, uh, two rows of surface array coils, but it also has two plus point coils on the tip of the probe. And what we have uh, found is that um, for doing a... Uh, inspection of the toe of a weld, you can get extremely good results from those plus point coils in the weld toe. And then the array coils can be used for either the heat affected zone around the weld or doing the weld crown. Um, this is actual data that you can see from this plus point where you can see the uh, axial crack that's showing up in the toe of the weld and then both a circumferential um, and uh, axial uh, indication that are in the crown of the weld. Um, this particular probe you can get with either the UHMW, the cloth, or the super fabric for the wear surface. The next probe I'm going to cover is the flexible probe. It's the same as the weld probe, except that it doesn't have the plus points on it. This probe was really developed for the airline industry in looking at uh, rivets on airplane skins, but we've found um, additional applications where this probe can be used. Um, one application is uh, train wheels and um, it can even do the curvature near the end of the wheel looking for cracks or other types of uh, flaws. Um, and another one is mining drums. So these mining drums here are fairly large. They're about six feet in diameter and they have some significant grooves in that can cause cracking. Normally this testing is done with uh, magnet make particle testing, um, but here we took the flexible um, Surfex array probe, push it down into the groove, and we were able to see great indications um, of the uh, different flaws in the mining drum. Again, this particular probe has three different wear surfaces available. We have also made a low frequency version of the flex probe. This probe has much larger coils on it. Um, this is used for looking at um, multi-layer or thicker airplane skins. Um, uh, this particular one is very thick uh, Boeing um, reference standard. Uh, it's 0.19 inches thick. It gives great uh, great responses for the indications that are even on the far side of this particular reference standard. Um, another application that we found out that this probe can be used in is for testing large carbon steel piping. We had a customer that needed us to try to find circumferential cracks in this and we could just literally put this probe inside right along the inside surface and see surface breaking cracks on this carbon steel piping. Um, this probe has a four inch coverage area um, with uh, 32 coils, two rows of 16 coils, and it's run at a very low frequency as you can see between uh, one and 85 kilohertz. And finally, um, there is also a tape probe that we've made. We're making this in a couple of different sizes. Uh, this probe um, is used on for finding surface flaws on complex geometries in very smooth surfaces. It can also, uh, we found, can find extremely small indications on the surfaces of uh, smooth surfaces of other types of materials. Um, one difference for this probe as well um, <clears throat> is you can get this without any wear surfaces at all to get the probe as close as possible to the surfaces that you're looking at. And finally, um, we do make some handles for these probes. We have a handle already designed for the butt weld and for the T weld um, 
to make it easier to run this probe for a single person to use this probe and run it across. Something industry, interesting that we've done with this probe is we've actually put slots that the encoders can be hooked up to the handles as well as the um, electronics modules for the probes. We also encourage customers to make uh, their own handles. Um, next, we'll be reviewing a couple different videos of the applications and how these probes are used. Hi, this is a demonstration of a fastener inspection with subsurface cracks. Um, here I have an aluminum a reference standard with various fasteners and there are three manufactured uh, flaws on the bottom side, two um, EDM notches that are protruding from uh, two fasteners and one EDM notch that is not associated with any fastener. So this type of inspection is normally performed using a slide probe, but for this uh, demonstration I will be scanning it with a low frequency flexible array probe. Um, with this array probe, I am able to scan multiple rows of fasteners and thereby reducing the inspection time and also providing better probability of detection as I will demonstrate here. So as you can see here, I have three indications um, that represents the three uh, flaws on the bottom side of this reference standard. And these flaws, um, I can look at the uh, Lizardu response as well. So if I were to rotate this data. You can see where all the uh, fasteners are and if I look at a fastener without a flaw um, you get the normal flat response. Uh, and then if you look at the fastener with a flaw you will see the response open up uh, which is similar to a slide probe. And here, this is the flaw um, that is not associated with any uh, fastener, uh, which is a typical crack response. This is a demonstration of a pipe inspection using surface eddy current array probe. Uh, here I have a sample pipe with uh, some surface defects. Typically this type of inspection uh, is performed using dye penetrant or mag particle. However, these methods require surface preparations and the use of chemicals which can be harmful as well as time consuming. With surface eddy current array, um, there is little or no surface preparation required and it takes a fraction of the time required by these other methods. For this demonstration, I will be using a MIS 21C with a Surfix Flex probe. Uh, this probe comes with two types of wear surfaces. The one I have here is a more durable wear surface for inspecting rough um, areas. The flexibility of this probe allows for um, the inspection of a wide range of pri uh, pipe sizes. And um, this probe also comes with a detachable encoder, um, which can provide 
a consistent sample density as well as um, axial uh, distance information. Okay. I'll go ahead and scan this pipe. So here you can see all of the indications um, on the pipe. Um, some of these are pretty big volume. Um, you can also see some of the smaller volume flaws. Now there's um, an axial channel and a transverse channel. Uh, because most of these flaws are oriented in the transverse direction, uh, you will see them more prominently on the transverse channel than the axial channel. And uh, the merge channel will display both channels at the same time. This is a demonstration of a train wheel inspection using surface eddy current array. For this demonstration, I will be using a MIS 21C um, with the Surfex tape probe. Uh, this is a thin film probe, and the benefits of using this type of probe is, um, as you can see, it's very flexible. So it can conform to a variety of surface contours. Um, for this inspection, I will be uh, using this foam pad to place on top of the coils. This is to help me apply consistent pressure on each of the coils so as to minimize any liftoff variations. Now, Typically, this type of inspection is performed using mag particle or dye penetrant, but these methods require surface preparation and the use of chemicals, which can be time consuming. A surface eddy current array does not require any of these things, which makes it a lot easier and faster to perform this inspection. I'll go ahead and scan this part. Now the, I'm displaying both the transverse channel and the axial channel. As you can see um, right now there aren't many indications. So when I get down to this flat part, you can see um, many transverse cracks here on the transverse channel. And on the actual channel, you can see uh, the various pits that are on this, on the surface of this piece. So there you have it, um, very quick and easy inspection of the train wheel. Okay, so this, this application is for uh, ferrous welds and it's used in carbon steel materials you can see the weld here. It's uh, actually used in the new ASME Section 5 Article 8 code that's going to be released. In uh, Appendix 10 specifically, it calls out eddy current array examination for ferromagnetic and non-ferromagnetic welds for detection of surface breaking flaws. So you can see the EDM notches here on this plate match that ASME code for the EDM notches. Uh, typically, these inspections are done using PT or MT, and 
uh, also for conventional single coil eddy current probes. This particular solution is using the mis 21 c the array version, and a uh, Surfex weld probe. And this probe has 32 coils for the array portion of it, and then it has two plus point coils at the ends that are in different orientations to be able to get into the toe of the weld. And so the inspection is typically done with three passes. You'll do a pass on one side with the plus points up against the toe, and you're using the array coils to pick up the heat affected zone on one side. Then you flip and you do the other side with the plus point coils on the other side of the toe and picking up the other side of the heat, effect, heat affected zone. Then the third pass, you go over the crown of the well to pick up all of the flaws that are along the top. Uh, in the instrument here, you can see this is currently set up for this inspection. You can see the Surfex weld probe there. It has multiple channels, so you have channel one and channel two, which has your axial and transverse channels for the 32 coil array. And here you have it at 200 kilohertz. Uh, the channel three and four are actually the two plus point coils. And one is, uh, one is set up for axial, meaning both coils are picking up the axial. And then the channel four is both coils picking up the transverse. Uh, and you can notice here it's running at 100 kilohertz. So you actually have independent frequencies between the channels, uh, between your array coils and your plus point coils. So to do this inspection, you just hit start. And I uh, will run across the heat affected zone and into the toe. And this is on um, currently the transverse, so I'm going to switch to the axial channel. And you can see in the axial channel, uh, the flaws here are oriented in the axial direction and also the one that's in the toe of the, of the weld. And up here, this upper bar is your plus point coils. So there's actually two coils being stitched together in a C-scan view, which is uh, a unique way of viewing plus point coils. And then the lower portion is your 32 coil array. And these upper signals up here are your plus point signals. So you can see them up there. And there's a slight uh, offset of the coils. So that's why you're seeing a slight offset of the signals of the same uh, notch or indication. If you switch over to your standard impedance view, you can see the two plus point channels. And in the transverse, it goes in a downward direction. In the axial, it goes in an upward direction of the flaw signal. And you can see the slight offset of the, of the two coils. And that, that flip between the signal orientation down and up is a typical signal that you'll see from a plus point. The other, other indication that you see here is the uh, axial notch on the plate here out in the heat affected zone. And that is being picked up by the array coils. So now I'm going to uh, start a scan again. This time I'm going to flip on to, yep, I'm on the axial transverse. So now I'm on the transverse channel. And you can see the transverse notches here. So I'm going to run this. And you can see again, I'm picking up the transverse channel, transverse indication on the in the heat affected zone up, up here is your plus point signal. And if I switch over to my impedance view, I've got the transverse signal there and the axial channel, again, fl flipping the signal. So that's as, it, as you would expect for the plus point. Then the last scan I'm gonna do 
is across the crown. So you just make sure that your 32 coils, which you can see the um, indication here with the black bar of the where the coils are. So you line up the coils on the crown and just run over the crown of the weld. In the axial channel, you can see there's an axial uh, indication there. Uh, it's actually, because I was slightly off of the off of the crown, it's picking up that axial um, out in the heat, heat affected zone. And if you switch to the transverse, it's picking up the transverse there and actually is actually picking up some of the transverse in the, the toe. So that's how you would perform this inspection uh, on a weld. You do it in three passes and you can record up to uh, 10 meters or 30 feet or 60 seconds per scan. And then you can just do those uh, multiple data files if you need to do a really long weld seam um, and get the full coverage. Okay, I wanted to uh, go over a few things to consider if you're looking at the MIS-21C instrument. Uh, one thing is that we put out a notice that the MIS-21C uh, is a replacement for the MIS-21B, and uh, it goes beyond that. It's also a replacement for the DC-2, which is a older ZTEC conductivity-only instrument. And uh, in doing this, we went... Um, into the ISO and ASME codes and made sure that this instrument uh, met the technique and equipment variables. And these are the kind of essential things to be able to perform eddy current inspections. And I wanted to go into just a little bit detail of what, what that is. Uh, technique variables, uh, there's some examples here of the examination frequencies uh, 5 hertz to 10 megahertz is the range for the MIS-21C. The gain is from 10 decibels to 123 decibels, and that's a combination of analog and digital gain. The drive voltage is up to 12 volts peak to peak, and for the eddy current array application where you're going to be doing um, those with the Surfex array probes, it's up to uh, 19 volts peak to peak. The coil excitation modes are bridge and reflection, and you can actually run both of those options on the uh, Surfex array probe. So it's not, the array probes are not locked to a specific coil excitation mode. You can select those, those different variables. The uh, signal phase, the full uh, zero to 356 degrees, and in small increments of being able to adjust those. Uh, there's the full complement of signal filtering, high pass, low pass, band pass, the cross correlation, which we call a high pass two, median and spike. There's also an added um, newer one called the signal to noise ratio filter, which allows you to filter off low level uh, voltage signals and keep all of the data above that range. Uh, the sample rate up to 250 or sorry 25,000 samples per second and then the equipment variables uh, and here you have the signal generation gives the total harmonic distortion and the output impedance um, amplification demodulation and filtering um, here it's the input impedance the amplifier linearity and stability the frequency response, which is sometimes called bandwidth. Um, also looking at the analog to digital conversion. So there's the A to D resolution that goes along with that, the dynamic range and the effective A to D digitizing rate. And uh, for calibration, the drive frequency checking, uh, horizontal to vertical deviation and the orthogonal quadrature test. So there's, uh, thick document of engineering uh, checks that went into all of this that backs up this, this statement. So uh, taking that further, we also uh, have the MIS-21C that 
applies to Boeing procedures uh, where it was used with previous MIS instruments or uh, the DC instruments, the direct uh, conductivity instruments. And so you can see there, there's a whole list of uh, MIS instruments that were written into uh, or used to develop Boeing procedures that the MIS-21C is uh, equivalent to and qualified to use. So MIS-6, 10, uh, 17, the 20 series, and 21 and 22 series. We also did a uh, comparison to the Nortec series of instruments and made sure that it was uh, a suitable direct replacement for these instruments. So this includes the Nortec uh, 600D set, the 500D, the 2000D plus, and the 2000D. Um, essentially looking at those sim similar uh, technique and equipment variables. So looking specifically uh, at comparisons for standard eddy current, the MIS-21C compared to uh, Nortec 600D and a GE Phasic 3D, um, some of the, the key features is that the uh, MIS-21C obviously has the surfex array option or a surface array option for eddy current. Um, this is not available in those other instruments. And this you know, can greatly in increase your inspection time the display is a, a touch interface, so um, that's different than the Nortec or the Phasic. And the interface uh, symmetry of the MIS-21C was designed so that it could easily be used in left or right hand operation. If you look at the button interface, uh, there's a, a mirror of, of the button use. And um, compared to the other instruments, you uh, have to use your hands differently for left and right hand operation. So this just makes it more universal and, and pr more productive instrument to use. Uh, the legends are done with universal symbols. And uh, again, just to make this a more universal instrument for multiple different markets. Uh, we have multiple languages that are supported within the software, but from a hardware standpoint, we made an effort to to make the symbols uh, universal. And then it has uh, wireless connectivity. So it has the USB, um, but also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which allows for um, different types of operation, um, reporting, that type of stuff. The uh, wireless capability, can you can get locked versions if you uh, have a particular scenario where you can't use wireless devices in an inspection area. Um, so there is that option if you don't if you don't want the wireless. In looking at the ergonomics, uh, when you have this vertical orientation, which is different than a horizontal orientation for instrument, it puts a lot less strain on your hand and you can uh, you can withstand holding that instrument for a longer period of time when it's in that form factor. Um, sort of analogous to having your cell phone in this kind of vertical orientation. It's easier to hold that for a long period of time. Uh, it's a thin instrument, so only 1.5 inches thick, and that makes it just easier to grip and be able to hold on to. Um, we talked about the, the button access. Uh, the instrument actually has the ability to interface with all buttons in one handhold position. So um, instead of having the buttons spread apart, we have to actually readjust your hand position or use a second hand to be able to access all buttons. The, uh, all of those buttons are available in one hold position. And what this allows you to do is hold the instrument in one hand and do your inspection with the other hand and you don't have to um, stop doing what you're doing with your other hand during the inspection. Uh, in weight, it's only two and a half pounds when you add uh, batteries and the uh, cover assembly. The battery life is over 10 hours per charge and that's competitive against the other instruments. Uh, again, you can, for 24 hour operation, you have an extra set of batteries you can swap in. And it comes with the uh, very high signal to noise ratio 
that comes with the Miz acquisition board. So moving to an array instrument, uh, it does compete with the 85 Ready, the OmniScan MX. And uh, here the Miz 21C array has 32 coils for array probes. Uh, there is uh, more coil arrangements with the OmniScan MX and the Ready, uh, but in the Miz 21C, you're, you're starting at a much lower cost point and uh, you have a much smaller cable that you're dealing with because of the unique way that we're multiplexing the, the uh, Surfex array probes. So you have a very thin cable and a low, low cost instrument for that 32 coil array. Uh, the display is touchscreen. Um, again, with the Ready, it has that, but with the OmniScan MX, it's not. Um, going back to the interface uh, symmetry with the left or right hand operation, in these larger portable uh, instruments, you don't have that. You need to really use two hands or have it set on a, on a desk and, and use one hand that way. Uh, the, again, the legends are universal and, um, and then you have the USB and Wi-Fi Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, OmniScan MX is, is locking in those areas. So it's much easier to use this in uh, portable or handheld type inspections. Uh, the OmniScan and the Ready are not uh, really handheld type operations. You can hold it for a short period of time, but really you need to move it to a location and stage the instrument. So just makes it much faster to do inspections. Um, you can see there the thickness, it's um, much, much less than the OmniScan and Ready. Uh, and then weight as well, having a fraction of the weight of those instruments. And then also without having those larger display screens, which is where most of the power is consumed, uh, you can see the 10 hours per charge versus six to eight hours. So it just improves that time that you can do a continuous inspection. Uh, and we've done bench testing and we, we have a very high signal to noise ratio with this instrument. Uh, for calibration and software, the customers have the option to do calibrations if they choose. Uh, we do a calibration when we ship the unit and that's uh, open to recalibration, but it's not required. The software will, will continue to operate. All right, uh, next we'll have a summary of the Surfex Array Pros. Nice job, Jesse. Uh, next I'm gonna summarize the uh, Surfex probes. Our part numbering can be a little complex, so I thought I would cover that. When you're getting a complete um, probe that includes the electronics module, the encoder, and the coil set, we always start that part number with the model of the probe. And you can see the table of the models down here. And as mentioned earlier, a different electronics module is needed based on the instrument you're using. So the MIS-200 has one set of models, and then the MIS-21C, it has the same part numbering for the models, but it's just followed up with a uh, C after that. Um, we will be rolling out larger uh, probes in the future. The current probes that we have available all have the 32 count coils. And you can tell that because there's a S in the uh, part number there. Um, as we get to larger coils, the 64 coils will have an M in that position and the 128 coils will have an L in that position. You can also tell what type of wear surface you have on the probe that you're getting. Um, if you have a zero in the, this position, then there's no wear surface on it. We only offer tape probes without a wear surface. If you get the uh, weld or flexible probes, those will have um, uh, wear surfaces on them. The cloth wear surface ends in a one, the super fabric uh, is a two, and then we have a UHMW wear surface uh, that's 0 
uh, inches thick and that ends in a three. And you can also tell the length of the cable on the electronics module by the very last number uh, in the part number. Uh, 0, 06 is 6 feet long, a 13 is 13 feet, and 33 is 33 feet long. Our probe descriptions and coil set descriptions can also be um, uh, fairly confusing, so I'd like to go through those as well. Um, this is showing the coil set for the probe that was on the previous slide. Uh, again, whether, whether it's a MIS-200 or a MIS-21C, these coil sets are interchangeable between those electronics modules. Um, we start out again with the model number of the coil set. So we have weld flexible and tape versions of that. Um, we show you the coverage area of the coils in the part number. So this is a 1.7 inch coverage area. And then we also give you information about the coils and the frequency. So this one, particular one, which is a weld probe, has uh, uh, two rows of 16 coils. The frequency range runs from 50 kilohertz to uh, 2.8 megahertz. And this coil set also has two plus point coils. Since each one of the coil sets can also maintain um, wear surfaces, uh, it's the same as the previous page where the very last digit is telling you which wear surface you have on the coil set. We've created a, uh, a table for you that shows the um, different types of applications that these uh, probes and coil sets can be used in. We will also be posting this out on our website. Uh, it gives you the model um, of the type of probe or coil set. We have the original Surfex probe, uh, which was not flexible and had an integrated encoder. Then, of course, uh, we have the probes that we've discussed in this uh, webinar, the weld probe, the flexible probe, the low-frequency flexible probe, and the tape probes. Um, you can see the types of models in here for both the uh, MIS 21C or the MIS 200 instrument. Uh, we give you some types of applications that these types of probes are typically used in. These can be used in ferrous or non-ferrous materials. Um, for finding subsurface cracks, of course, it needs to be non-ferrous materials. Um, you, you typically won't see uh, types of indications or flaws below the surface of ferrous materials. Um, we give you the minimum crack length. This is typically based on the coil diameters that you can get for the various types of probes. Um, as the coil diameters change, uh, of course, the crack length minimum size that you can find will change. Uh, in, in good material that's not rough or doesn't have a lot of permeability, we have typically found that that crack length is about one third the diameter of the coil in the probe. Uh, we're providing you the frequency ranges of the probes, uh, penetration depth. Again, I want to point out that this depth can vary considerably based on the type of material, and there's formulas for figuring out how far um, the probe's going to penetrate based on the frequency that you're running at. Uh, the coil coverage is given for the probes, um, the coil diameters, and uh, another important item is the bend radius that we have for the various um, probes that we're using. I do want to point out also for the tape probe bend radius, um, this is a very, very tiny bend radius. Uh, the idea with this is if you're doing like a turbine route, you would put this onto a probe handle that would keep it at that bend radius and you wouldn't reuse it. Reuse it. Taking it down to that bend radius multiple times may cause a damage to the probe. For these other probes, the um, bend radiuses has actually been tested by flexing the probe backwards and forwards over a radius of this size 10,000 times. So we did do quite a bit of testing for that.